Welcome back, everyone. Another massive episode of Tommy Talks today. We go back to the West Coast Eagles, and we've got Jakey Waterman in the building. The snake, the mud flap. We talk about his career growing up, the influence his father's had on his footy, some of his idols and how he's played alongside them. Uh, we have a little bit of a chat about the dark days at West Coast when their injuries were uh, occurring too frequently. But now, back on the right track. The impact Harley Reid's had at the footy club and how the snakes in career best form. We talk about it all. So if you're a diehard footy fan, a West Coast Eagles fan, you'll love this one. So tune in. This episode is proudly sponsored by KPI Construction Services. When it comes to construction sites, reliability and efficiency are key. That's where KPI Construction Services shines. With a single call, KPI provides a range of essential services which includes labour hire, crane hire, and traffic control. KPI is a progressive business with modern plant and equipment across all of their operating states. Focusing on innovation and to avoid the business drifting is always front of mind. We are proud to be aligned with and have such a reputable company partnering with the show. Aces, I know I always go on about the Rixies, but I got huge news. We have all our styles and colours restocked on the website right now. It's been months. We ran out of stock, but we're back. Get online, grab some sunglasses at rickseyewear.com.au right now and use our little discount code ACES if you want a 20% discount code on the house. Righto, let's get into the show. Welcome back, everyone. Another episode of Tommy Talks, and we're heading back to WA again we love WA, and we're very lucky to have another uh, member in the building. And Jakey Waterman, the snake, geez, kicking bags every week. Uh, and good to see you in the Fremantle colours. I can see the. Uh, <laughs> it's great to see you in the Freo colours, big boy. Who knows? Um, <laughs> uh, good, on, good on you, Tommy. Cheers for having me. Um, mate, uh, we'll talk about your year and uh, your footy career and everything else in between. But let's start with a lot of people that um, have been here from the start would remember the lockdown league. And if they don't, well, we'll tell you what it was. But it's, you were a pivotal member of that, and uh, so was Oscar. And it was a great time, wasn't it? I think it was 2019 when everything went locked down, and we thought, let's create a FIFA competition with 30 AFL boys and two randoms. Um, yep. And yeah. uh, it was good fun. Yeah, I remember getting the, the first message off you. I don't know how – how, how did you even come I about? Think, I think Scoey might have said, oh, Scoey, you yeah. boys play. And I was like, oh, That's perfect. Sense. I need a couple of um, West Coast boys. Yeah, no, it was – yeah, it was, it was good. It was – Obviously, during COVID, no one had anything to do, really. So um, most blokes would have been smashing cold or FIFA anyway during those times. So, um, yeah, it was a good, good little initiative by yourself and um, ended up doing doing quite well and making it to the end. But, um, yeah, I, I love me FIFA. There's a good little FIFA crew at West Coast and I know there are a few other clubs as well. So it's good to get everyone involved and, yeah, have a bit of a laugh. We had a few dramas as well. I remember it was a pretty funny, weird time, but I remember um, – we pre-recorded some stuff and I remember we got a few of you boys in trouble because I think one of the journalists, it might have been Tommy, was it, who was it? Tommy Morris might have been lurking around calling me, but they picked up that, you know, you boys were at the same house playing FIFA when you were allowed to. And then there was a new lockdown rule come in and because we pre-recorded, all that drama went down. And then I remember we had McDonald's as a sponsor and you guys were hungry jacks and we were putting the jerseys up. And I think you and Oscar made the granny. And all of a sudden, we've uh, we've got a West Coast v West Coast player in the granny, and we had to put like the blank jerseys on. Remember that? Yeah, I do. I, <laughs> I was yeah. like, "Oh, this is a nightmare." Well, I I didn't really pick up on any of that, but I, I remember I can't remember really what was spoken about. But me and I was got called into to a little meeting to talk about it. <laughs> and we just didn't see anything wrong with it, but obviously, like AFL, like you yeah. know, it's bigger fish to fry than just us. And um, yeah, we I think we actually got told to. Just wrap it up, like finish. Like, I know. And we were in the final, like in Grand a few final, days. I know. And I me and Oscar were sort of looking at each other, like, we're playing at this thing. <laughs> 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 we can't get out of it now. So, um, yeah, I mean, probably should have got out of it now because I think he smoked me from, if I recall yeah, correctly. The big fella, yeah, yeah, big guy got you. Um, but yeah, yeah, there was yeah, a bit of trouble, you know. We had a bit of strife with our connection and my dodo internet wasn't, oh, the wasn't internet, too good. The internet yeah. issues. It was such a hard – I look back now and I go, it was so much fun, like, but it was so hard organising. You had, you had blokes <laughs> – some blokes could not even connect their internet. I'm going, well, what help do we have trying to get – I think we were bringing in audio from Zoom and we were doing the – and then all of a sudden someone's three one up and the internet crashes and I'm as the commissioner going, oh, boys, we're going to have to restart. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you know what the funniest thing about the whole thing was? We – 
we had an, a whole AFL wide players um, Zoom call or something to speak about. Obviously, what was going to happen and oh, the AFLPA one, the AFLPA one, <laughs> and um, I think Marshy threw to the floor and like blokes were were asking questions and they would turn their um, the thing off, so just say unknown and, and like all the questions would just be like. Hey, Jake Waterman here, Marsh. You're like, blah, 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 blah. And I'm sitting there, I'm, I'm, my head's about to blow off. Like, it was first, it was just the West Coast boys doing it. And I think other lads started joining from other teams. And I just remember checking our lockdown league chat, and all the boys were just going off in there. And I, thought, I was about to have, like, I was about to have an aneurysm, mate. I was just, I was, lo- I was losing it. But looking back at it now, it's some of the, some of the funniest oh, shit mate, ever. It was, so, it was like a thousand players, and they're oh, all man. saying that they're Jake Waterman. Oh, mate. <laughs> I, I was pacing up and down the house. I was like, I thought it was done. <laughs> <laughs> I was done for. <laughs> that was, they are good calls because no one, yeah. no one talks in them except for like the, the you know, the key personnel. And then yeah, people no. are saying, like, it's like, like Josh Kennedy, Trent Koch is like asking like serious questions. It's like, hey, Marcy J. Waterman here, just wondering about golf, like. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't even play golf. <laughs> yeah, no, I do remember that. I remember the group chat oh, actually going man. wild. Like, this is crazy. Then, I still get it to this day. I mean, I think it was must have been the Bulldogs boys doing it, but every time I play some teams, I'll just be, like, lining up for a go and I'll hear someone go, hey, Jake Waterman here. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, I just piss myself straight away when I'm trying to concentrate. <laughs> so good. Amazing. So good. Well, yeah, anyway, there's um, – the lockdown league was a good. I mean, it was obviously a little crisis there, but we made the most of it. With and we had a couple of um, randoms in. I remember Big Kit jumped in, yeah. gave it to Sidey, and but yeah, I remember when I started Oz American Aces, I used the lockdown league kind of yeah. YouTube and, and Instagram and whatnot, and um, some of the people were like, "What the fuck is this? <laughs> I haven't signed up for this." Yeah. And I was like, "Come on, guys! Like, he's up. It's still the same crew here. <laughs> We're just doing a bit more uh, podcast and less FIFA." Yeah, but yeah, good old times, mate. Let's talk about you. I guess the way I like to start is, well, just, um, can you just skim over, you know, where you grew up and give everyone a bit of an insight um, to, you know, how you got to the West Coast Eagles footy club? Uh, yeah, WA boy, obviously. Um, sort of growing up all over WA, I guess. Um, started sort of South River, then um, old man got a job coaching Peel Thunder in the Waffle. So I moved down, managed away for a few years there. Uh, absolutely loved it down there. It was a sort of a good place to grow up in that sort of age group. Um, he got the job at Subi in the Waffle, so I moved back up and I've pretty much been sort of where I am now um, ever since. Played footy for Morris Junior Football Club, um, just you know, sort of affiliated with my school, Newman College there. Um, and then, yeah, come up through Claremont Footy Club and done the development squads and, and Colts and, and whatnot. Played a bit of WA footy as well, so um, probably a pretty generic sort of upbringing of someone sort of making their way through the AFL, obviously. Um, had a bit of a watch on me as well with the old boy um, playing for West Coast. So there's always a bit of chat around the, the father-son sort of stuff. But um, no, I mean, I've been very lucky um, sort of with my bringing um, one of two brothers. So there was always something happening in the household. And um, yeah, parents sort of gave me every, every opportunity to to play a bunch of different sports and sort of get the best out of myself and um, to the point where I was you know, able to get on a list and Sort of create my own path from there. Yeah, nice and well said, mate. What about – we'll stay there for a second, but the other sports, you look like you'd be a gun cricketer or something. Did you play cricket? Yeah. I'll, I could just tell – you'd be a bowler, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, you could yeah, just tell yeah. the big dog coming up yeah, with the same. with the big snake, with the <laughs> with the mullet flying off the back, bowling heat. The mud flap hanging off the back. <laughs> the mud flap. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, I've always loved playing, like, different sports. So just – as a kid, you always want to just do as whatever you can, but um, – Probably never really got serious with the cricket, but I, I love playing, you know, first 11 and stuff and, and anything like that. Um, usually get the first change bowl. I just oh, yeah. let, let the boys have the new rock and I'll, I'll put it on a 50 cent piece. I, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But um, yeah, I'll playing cricket with the lads. There's something about, you know, being in the outfield and just chatting shit with the lads is something I, something I do miss, but. Um, yeah, I'll probably get back there one day and play. Do you, do you play, play, play? Like, do you have a, like, I know the Giants, right? They, every Christmas break before we go away, we have a cricket game and they, I don't, I'm, I've only played one, but it was so much fun. And yeah. Do you guys do much like that no, on West Coast? Well, we, we, yeah, I've seen, I think Saints do it as well. Um, and we've got a few, um, a few boys at the club that, that play cricket. We've actually sort of got like a running first 11 going where like every year just gets assessed with blokes getting retired or, or leaving the footy club and young guns coming in and, 
Um, I think I'm number 10 at the moment. So <laughs> there's plenty of debate about who fits in that 11. But, Who's one? Um, opening, oh, I think it's Gaffy fancies himself, but me, Gaffy and Wither actually down, actually went and had a net session during the off-season and I've blown his front pad right off. <laughs> and <laughs> he still he reckons it was going down the leg, but that thing was counting it in the middle. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I would love to. We just, yeah, we just don't have enough. Don't have enough probably for two teams. It would be fun. We, we do plenty of cricket just in the shed. We've got a shed area and um, when we're waiting to do weights or before training, there'll be a good group of boys rolling the arm over and, yeah, it's just fun. It's just like, yeah, nothing better. Nothing better. Did you play any other sports like basketball? Or- yeah, a bit of basketball, but like – I wasn't, it wasn't very polished, man. I was in doing the dirty work in the yeah. post, like just getting boards and throwing it out to the boys, but <laughs> just, just, setting, just setting picks, like, you know, you know how it is. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, like. It a was, real Horford operation. Yeah, yeah literally, poor Mills out. Poor Mills out. <laughs> <laughs> I was, um, I mean, I, I was lucky that um, I didn't really have to make a choice, let's put it that yeah. way, about yeah. different sports. It was, it was always going to be footy and. Um, yeah, we do have a bit of a gag at, at the footy club about, you know, having the choice because we've obviously had like Brad Sheffield come through who like always used to tell people that he that he had the choice by like, footy or cricket <laughs> and like some of the, some of the blokes like Joshy Rotham always goes on about him having the choice to play footy or cricket and he's never played a game of cricket in his life. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's all fun and games. No, nah, it is good. It's good to hear. Going back to, um, I guess, just getting – Picked up by um, the Eagles. Like, what was that like? Where were you? We love the draft day stories. Or was it kind of, were you father, son? Yeah. Oh, so it's a bit different. So when did you find out, um, like, what did you find? Did you find out in the, I know like a few boys that I know, like, you know, you speak about Mitch Wallace or, you know, Joey Dunner going through, they kind of know mm. and they can't tell anyone. Were you similar? Like, was yeah. it early in the year? Well, it was sort of like, um, firstly, the, the club comes to you and they say that they want to nominate you. So they want, they want you as a father, son. So if you go back and say, yep, I'm, I'm going to nominate as well, that means you're definitely going to end up on a list. So it was good to know that that was going to yeah. happen. Um, it probably, just because of the far sound, the way it worked back then was like, you know, I had a, a little bit of interest from other teams, but once I'd nominated, um, it was sort of like, unless unless a team wants you sort of like inside the top 30, like no one's really going to bid for you. So I knew that there's probably a couple of teams that, um, might have been keen, and but once it got past sort of thirty or forty, I knew that you know West Coast was just going to wait to their last pick to, to pick me up because even if there's no point really any t- other team bidding on me because West Coast would just bid straight away. So it was a long night. I was last pick in the draft, so it's, oh, really? it was like four four and a half hours of waiting. Um, but my best mate Joshy Rothman is still with us now. Got picked like thirty five, so that was great knowing that he was going as well. Um, <laughs> Yeah, my older brother Alec got picked up at, I think he was 76 and I was 77, so I was a little bit flat about that. But <laughs> yeah, I, I guess sort of once I nominated the club, I knew I was going to land there, but um, still nothing beats the moment where you know it gets called out and it's just like, oh, wow, like this is real now. Like yeah. I'm officially an AFL player and um, no, I was good. I had friends and family over and. Uh, Big party. Yeah, ventured into Northridge that night. That's great. Was like capital run, what was going around there, Northridge? Well, it wasn't busy that night. I, think I popped in the Brass Monkey, which is oh, like yeah. just a little pub on the corner, but um, it wasn't like a big night. I was just like just stoked to be around all my mates who were just, yeah, over the moon for me. Special night, isn't it? Well, you we kind of reflect a bit when we're talking to the boys, but it's one of those nights, I mean, you just never forget. You probably think mm. more about it when you finish up, but yeah, because all your friends and family are around, it's pretty hard to get that these days. Yeah, I normally know, with the boys, then with the f- it's never all together at the moment. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was, mate. It was so special. It was un- unbelievable. You, you see, um, look back to during COVID and all those guys getting picked up, and they're not allowed to have like their friends over and that. You feel sorry for them a little bit, but because you, you know when you get picked up, it's not only for you, it's family, it's for your mates that have been there for, for years playing footy and. You know, as much as it's special for you, it's like it's just as special for them, really, because like, you know, they're going to hang on to you for for years and, and ride every bump with you. So, um, yeah, you, you do a lot for them as well. Yeah, well said, mate. Now, let's just talk about anyone out there would go. Well, what's it like walking into a footy club, and especially West Coast? What year did you get picked up? Uh, I think it was sixteen draft, so first year seventeen. Yeah, and what year did West Coast win the granny? 18. So you're walking into a club that's yeah. flying. Well, what was it like walking in with some of these blokes and name some of the guys that you yeah. remember just being in awe of? Well, fu- funny, I'd been around the club for a few years, so I sort of knew a few of the boys, but I, it was pure coincidence that on Kitchener Park at Subi, I rolled in with Josh Rotham, one of my best mates at the time, 
walked in together with him. We're like, we sort of looked at each other like, yep, this is it. Like, good luck, buddy. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see yeah. on the other side. Walk in, open up. The first two people stand right there are Matty Prittis and Sam Mitchell, two Brownlow medalists, and off like, shit myself. Like, I, I know Pritt, obviously, but didn't really know Mitch and shook everyone's hand and um, just sort of wandered around. Drew Petrie come to the club as well. Um, big Joffa Giles was running around. Vards come in. And then obviously all the legends at West Coast already, Lecker, JK, Bunga, Eric McKenzie, you know, list goes on. But, yeah, it was, it was, we were a really mature list at that time, so we didn't have many younger players. Everyone, it was really set list. So it was more, for me, it was more just work hard but sit back and just watch, you know, yeah. sort of the old seen, not heard type, type of set up there. But, um, yeah, going from 17 to 18, it it flipped on its head because, you know, either blokes retired or blokes left the football club and all of a sudden the, the average age had dropped right down. I think it went from oldest to close to the bottom and youngest and it, it was it was a cool thing to be a part of because it just opened up so many avenues to sort of younger players like myself going from nowhere near the first 22 to like, Jesus, I think there's like, it might be a spot for me there if like train hard this pre-season but... Um, yeah, the whole, whole experience was, it was cool. I was, I was out most of my first year with, um, a stress in my foot and actually played a bit of waffle footy and then got in the squad for the last game ever at Subi, the Adelaide game, which got us into the finals. Um, obviously went out the next week, but, oh no, two weeks later we had Shui kick that, that goal on the final, um, against Port. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the 18 year was just. Yeah, I mean, we all know what happened there. No one, no one gave us a sniff. I think a few, few of the media pundits thought we were going to come last. So, um, yeah, that was a special year. Was lucky enough to play a lot of footy that year. I think I played eighteen games in the Premiership year, and unfortunately, just fell out of favour at the wrong time. But um, yeah, that was a, just a whirlwind, and um, so happy for so many of the boys like J.K. and Lecker to sort of be able to. I mean, Lecker wrapped it up after that game, but just to fulfill a lifelong dream and, and win a flag it was yeah amazing to see so good and even being a part of it people don't realize like you I mean you're quite young and raw but <clears throat> as you said those older guys that are wrapping it up the day after like it's so special but any memories from the week you know like obviously when especially someone like Lecker I'd imagine he's going hard because he's like I don't have to rock up again boys yeah. I'm done but it would have been as a young guy you just the energy you're providing them is is enormous because you think now like I mean you're only what 26 I remember now like you've, you're still providing energy but the young guys they've just got mm. they've got so much energy and they just don't stop they love it so is there any times that you remember that just you know just great that you can share um well yeah i mean i look it's funny because i look back at it now and i'm just like if i if i missed a flag right now i would be like beside mm. myself i wouldn't be able to cope but because i was you know 19 you know i was playing for a successful successful side you still think it's still going to come and obviously with us right now it hasn't worked out that way but nevertheless it was i was just so over the moon at the time i was just like I'm, I'm a part of this. Like, I don't care what anyone says. I know they say people aren't a part of it, but like, I've I played a bit of footy this year, so like, I, I feel like I'm a part of it. And yeah, we, if the whole week was just like a blur. It was just you know one piece up to another. And I'm I'm still sitting there as a young kid, like looking at my idols, going like, All right, I'm having a beer with Josh Kennedy. Like, <laughs> yeah, how, yeah. how good's this? Like going skits. There was a there was a few. There was a karaoke bar one night um, at Northridge. It might have been a few days after the Granny. That was. Hamish Brayshaw, you know, he's just like a motor mouth. Like just he, he literally had the microphone in his hand the whole night. <laughs> and, oh, mate, like I, I can't get into too much detail, but yeah, it was just, just like, imagine. like just proper like hysterics, like ab, ab pain laughing the whole <laughs> night at him just like going off his head, just at, Belting out songs. Oh, just, yeah, just talk, <laughs> like it was just like roaming Brian, just like <laughs> – but like he's just, he was either singing or just like talking to himself and you could just hear what he was saying out of the corner. Yeah. Oh, it's just like, <laughs> it, it was amazing. But yeah, that, yeah, the whole week was just, just an absolute blur and um, yeah, loved every minute of it. So good. Yeah. It's exactly, um, yeah, I, I know exactly how you feel. I remember being at um, Frio 2013 when it was my second year as well. And like I was emergency and I, you, and I was the same as you, like look back now and you think it's just going to happen the next mm. year, but it's just not the case, is it? And like you said, now it's, you, it's, you're way more desperate, but you still do feel a part of it. You played a few games and whatnot. And 
it does take, I mean, what's your thoughts on that? It's a weird one because of our culture, but it's a weird one as well because I don't know, I feel like the medal around the neck if you didn't play, I just still don't know how I'd go happening if I didn't play, you know, a bit like the NBA players mm. that sit on the bench, but it does take everyone, doesn't it? So do you think they should give medals to everyone or do you think it should still just be 22? No, nah, I, don't, I don't think so. I I think to play in a premiership would just would just be like, you know, you're, you're one of 22 or 23 now that it's just like you, you boys went to war on that day and you got it done. Yeah. As much as, you know, there might have been another 15 blokes to play that year. Um, yeah, I... I know the NBA do the rings and stuff, and whether you you played every game or none, you still get one. But um, I just think as as a tradition tradition in our in our great game that it should probably stay that way. Um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't think I'd I'd feel right either yeah. walking around with a with a medal. That um, it, it might be different if you if you're someone who's a star and's played every game and does his hammy. Like that, Bob Murphy or something. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, like just someone who you know definitely should be playing. Um, but like you can't, you can't. Yeah. How, how do you tell? Like how do you? Tell? Yeah, it's too great. Yeah, so it's yeah. just kind of it's just yeah, it, it is, and it got, it there. does create a lot of stories, doesn't it? People yeah. miss out. People get in. Yeah. Look at Pickett from Richmond. I think his first game was um, on the flag. I think. Yeah. We so had we had uh, Will, Will Schofield played, but he probably wouldn't have if Sheppy didn't do his hammy. Mm. But you know, and he was one of our best on the day. It's just like funny way of funny way of coming around. But yeah, to answer your question, I, I reckon it probably just players that played. Now let's talk about, you know, your career now. You've, um, back to you. This year in particular, like it's, you're, you're kicking a, a large amount of goals and it's amazing to see, mate. And um, it's, it's yeah, it's, it's going to be exciting. I think West Coast list, what you have done in a short period of time um, is is great. It's great for the competition. There's no easy games. There might be a couple here and there, but West Coast certainly aren't easy. And I've got two questions here, but we'll start with your form. And the second one was we'll go to last year and how tough it was seeing how um, banged up your list was. But this year, you, you've you clearly taken your game to another level. Um, Oscar's been out a little bit more. It, it, what, what has it been? Has it been the fact that you're starting in the square more? Are you feeling more confident? A lot of work you've stacked over eight years is starting to come out. What what, what, what would you put it down to? Uh, I think it's a range of things. Um, it probably all starts with, with preseason, I know people talk about getting a good preseason is key, but I, you know, I buy into that. And you know, when when you're fit, you're able to go onto a footy field, and because I think I'm a pretty smart player, I'm able to you know do things that you know I, I see the game the way that it is. So, might be able to get to a contest or run a little bit hard to get somewhere. And I think it just opens up so many more avenues as a forward, especially getting split off your opponent, um, being able to sort of grind them into the into the ground and you know, get on top of me in the fourth quarter or, or whatnot. But obviously Oscar going out as well um, just probably, you know, makes you more relied upon going forward, um, get a few more targets and, um, you know, just it's – you're naturally going to, you know, win a few – get a few more marks, get a few more goals that way. But, um, yeah, all, all of that with probably a little sprinkle of luck and it helps that, you know, we've got some pretty handy midfielders in there, there at the moment that are actually winning – clearances most games and um you know there's a massive difference from 30 inside 50s to 50 and um yeah I'll, I've, I've gotten lucky on a few of them but yeah I've, I guess I've been able to play some pretty decent footy and you're a sharp shooter as well like how much how much practice have you done on set shot have you always been a great set shot or goal kicker what would you put that down to um I guess I've always been a decent uh, drop hunt. So, um, I, I do do a lot of work on it. Um, but I, I think set shots is, it's a bit of a mental thing as well. And when you're, when you're in form, you, you know, when you've got the ball and you can hear the crowd, you know, some, when you're out of form, you just like, you're shitting it. And like, <laughs> you, you can tell sometimes when you grab the footy, you're like, yep, yeah, mom, just no chance here. Like this could come off me shin. But when you, when you're confident and, and you're up and about and you're in form, it's just like, yep, yeah, just go with the flow and things happen naturally, but um, yeah, you've got to do a lot of practice on it. It's you know, as 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 a forward, you need to have you know, with your set shot goal kicking. And you know, it's just I've probably just got a couple of cues that I that I go through um, every set shot, and more often than not, if if you get both of them right, then um, yeah, she'll go through. But um, yeah, you don't always kick them. Well, you 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 certainly do normally <laughs> kick them. I'll give you the tip. Um, well, we'll start on here for a second. You're talking about clearances. 
There's a lot of buzz. We, we got to talk about it. We we try not to talk about this bloke on our podcast, Man Hibo, because yeah, you know, we feel like everyone else is doing a great job. Um, you know who I'm referencing to, which is Harley Reid. But what what I want to ask you is things that I'm really interested. We all see the stuff game day, but when did he rock up to the club and you went, fucking hell, this bloke is actually legit. Like, was there a training? Was it the first session? Was it like he's clearly doing this stuff at training? What was it? Him in the gym throwing tin around at 18? Like, because he's a big boy. What was it that you went? Mate, I think we've actually got the real deal here. Yeah, definitely wasn't him in the gym. I think he's still wrapping his head around there. Oh, is he no good the, <laughs> that, that is good to hear. That is good to hear. He's not, uh, he's not perfect no, yet. He's just a country kid. He's learning all the, all the yeah. new stuff in the gym. Um, broomsticks. I remember doing the broomstick yeah, for a month. <laughs> yeah, plenty. Um, I, I think straight away we could all tell, but I think it was after sort of a few training sessions where we were doing a bit of match sim here and there. And I think we had one match sim where – we were probably playing like 20 minutes and I think he kicked like three CB goals, just like unbelievable. And I think we all just sort of walked in the changes after like no one even spoke to each other. We're just like looking around going like, <laughs> like, <laughs> this is it. <laughs> we're on here, boys. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, and yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's insane. He's, he just gets it. Like he, he knows what's going on. He just backs himself in constantly. And like more often than not, if if you do that, and I know a lot of people, even myself, have trouble with just like backing yourself in. It, it seems like whether he's playing a good game or a bad game, his his attack on the footy and his mindset doesn't change. He's, he's always like, "Yep, yeah, give me the footy, I don't care." And like a few times, like we'll, we'll have chats on the field, and he'll just be like, "Jake, just kick it to me." And I'm like, "You had someone on you." It's just like, "I don't care, just kick it to me." And it's yeah. just like, "Wow, like this kid just just wants it, just backs himself in." It's and it. Such a weapon, but skills, um, he can kick it 60, a couple of meters off the deck. And, um, yeah, we've, we've seen probably 10 games of his career so far. And you know, he's probably had three or four Mark of the Week nominees, a goal, goal around or whatever. Yeah, I'll just, yeah, we're, we're in for a good ride, I reckon. With yeah. Him. And it's good for not only, yes, like for the fans, but for you boys. Like, have you seen a bigger buzz? In the crowd and and a bigger buzz on the streets. Like, is he is he already the biggest name you've seen in your time? Because you've been there through a premiership mm. era. Um, there's some guns that you've played with, but is there a people fantasizing over this bloke more than anyone that you've ever seen before? Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. So you walk down the street and have a coffee, and people just rush him. Yeah, Crazy. yeah. No, I've um I've been out and about with him a few times, just away from the footy club and. It's it's because I've been out with like you know Nick and Nick can't hide his like he's just massive you know got the dreadlock he can't pit like he can't hide and he gets he gets smacked with autographs and photos and whatnot but like yeah Harley you know he's just got to chuck the hoodie on and chuck the sunnies on the hat on and even then like people still find him from anywhere and um, he handles it really well though like he's such a mature kid and you know he, yeah I just I actually struggle to fathom like how well he deals with it all because he just seems so unaffected by it and um yeah I think when you get a kid like that like Harley in who just has so much attention and he's a superstar already um you, you might worry about how all that's going to affect him and I've got no doubt at times it would get to him but he doesn't really show it and mm. um he still holds himself in in the highest regard and um yeah I think that's that's a, a massive part of the battle with sort of what he's coming to face too. It's so good. It's, uh, I mean, we, I don't, I haven't been in, I haven't been in WA for a while, but you're just seeing it and it's just becoming a talking point. You, you see the media down here and it's just whatever he does. Obviously, there's brilliance every game. He does something like you said, but yeah, I just wanted to ask you what it's like because I, I only think I can, when Fifey won his brown lows, I remember going like to, I always tell this story, but we went to Raffles once and I remember like mm. he couldn't get out because it was yeah. like in the corner and the bar, the boys were trying to protect him and people just barreling through trying to get, photos, you know, and I think Instagram only just come out and yeah. um, probably not signatures that night, but I just remember going, this is a lot. And I'm mm. thinking, this is, this is, I'm like, this is what this, this kid's probably going through every day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh. he's probably driving around the old camera, you know what I mean? The yeah. cash hasn't hit yet. So yeah, he's just, he's just a young kid just kind of getting from A to B. <laughs> yeah. I know. Like even like, even like you probably would experience as well. Like you get a little bit of attention, you get like a few people come up to you, especially when you're out trying to have a beer or something and. Um, you'll get a few people pick you out and want to have a chat or a photo or whatnot, but it's just next level. It's, you want to be able to, you know, keep incognito when you go out 
and yeah, it's just impossible for him and. Yeah, like I, oh, I don't know how I'll deal with it. He eh? almost has to have the. Uh, he has to. Ha- yeah, you have to organise the. You have to organise it and block yeah, it off in the public, yeah. which is almost unnatural, isn't it? Yeah, I know. And it. Yeah. And he just. He's just a country kid, so he yeah, just, it's he, good that he's country. I, yeah. I mean, not that it matters, but yeah, I guess he could probably be happy just sitting in the backyard having a beer. Mate, that's, that's right up his alley. But um, yeah, when you do go out, it's just yeah, um, it's going to be a bit of a struggle going into the future. Either. But just watching, I mean. Let's talk about now um, last year, and then we'll get back to this year with blokes like Harley and and, and even Yoey and you. Everyone's stepping up. Oscar's back in the team now. Um, but last year was so tough to watch. Like, mate, watching watching anyone struggle sucks. Watching a team depleted, heaps of injuries and just being peppered every week. Um, you talk about the coach as well. I mean, I couldn't imagine being a coach, but just having to deal. Like, you've got no levers to pull, as you said. Like, we were talking before how good Yoey's going, but putting players in different spots just to stop the bleeding a little bit. Like, how hard was it going through that, getting 30 inside 50s? Like, if anyone out there wants to know, the average is around 50 to 60 if you're flying, but 30, you're almost starved of opportunity. How hard was that week in, week out on the road? We know how much West Coast and Frio travel. Like, how do you sum it up? Yeah, you're just right in the trenches and like, you know, the only way out is in sort of. And I think we did buy into that and we as a playing group, like we, I think we did the best we could. And at times, you know, the people probably didn't agree with that. I didn't think we were, we were good enough. And, you know, you, you talk about sort of as a coach, you probably run out of leave to pull and, you know, you go into games with, you know, you plan A, B and C and whatever, but. I think we, Simo probably ran out of letters last year. Like he just, we we just didn't have the cattle out there um, for most of it. And, you know, you're missing some of your, your best. Like Gov missed a lot of footy. Liam Ryan missed a lot of footy. Shuey was missing a bit with his hammies and, and, and Yoey as, as well. And, you know, you, you you do forget about when those guys come back from injury, they're, they're, they're underdone as well. So um, when you're underdone, come here to play AFL, and we had to put him in and play him. You, you put him at risk of getting injured again, and that's probably what happened a few times. But um, yeah, at, at times it was yeah, it was it was really tough. It was pretty demor- demoralizing at stages. Yeah, you guys would be very mentally tough. What was the toughest moment you reckon? Like, was there a moment for you? Was there a moment where you're like, you know, we all have, you know, we call it we look like you know losing the plot. But like, was there a moment where you're like, wow, like I am struggling? And then how'd you get out of it? Um, Individually. we had a, um, probably one of our, probably a, our worst loss was, um, against Hawks down in Tassie. I think at the time we'll last and second last and everyone had built that game up to be sort of the first win we have for the year. Um, and we ended up getting done by like 130 points and, you know, we, I think we lost TB and Gov and yeah, we just, yeah, we, yeah, we, we got absolutely pants down there and. I think, uh, you know, you're out there in the middle of it and you're sort of looking around going, what, like, what is happening? Like, we were supposed to be a sniff here. And then, yeah, you do, you do. That was probably a game where, like, you just run out of answers. It's just like, yeah, not good enough. We're just not good enough. We need to, we need to yeah, review this one and and start from scratch. And um, I think we did follow up the, the week later pretty decent. But, um yeah, I had a bit of a tough year last year. I missed the second half of the year with um, – had some gut issues, so I ended up in hospital after a game. Um, but although – what I will say is those periods last year and the year before, um, it, it grows a certain amount of resilience within, within the football club um, that when you do get to these times where we are starting to play better footy and you know, we're winning a couple of games here and there, probably should have won some more, is that – you know, you, you've got that sort of base level of resilience, which probably other teams don't have. And I think it makes you a better person as well because you get so much perspective on on life as well. And, um, yeah, I mean, losing is not not great. It's not fun. But, um, yeah, there's so much to take from every single um, every single loss as well. So, um, yeah, it was, it was bloody tough. But I think we're starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel and um, hopefully – fans and whatnot can be proud of the way that we're trying to play. Um, I know it's it's tough to go out there week in, week out in the AFL and, and play the way you want to play. It's, 
it's unrealistic to expect that because the competition is just so tight. There's so many good teams out there, but um, the endeavour to try and play the way that we want to play um, is hopefully what's giving our fans some hope at the moment. People don't realise how hard it is sometimes is what we're trying to get at here. Like you, like you said, you're running out of answers. It's not, it's a, you feel a bit lost, mm. but um, but yeah, like we know, time heals everything. And if you put it into perspective as well, like you, most of your players are out injured, like mm. you said. I think that's a main thing people forget, bringing them back underdone. Mm. Like, you know, you get these, yeah. you know, all Australians back in, but they're getting rushed in because they're not playing waffle. They're not getting some, uh, getting their two games of minutes up. So yeah. it's good for people out there that probably are a bit harsh at times. Um, back to this year though, mate, it's, it's, it is looking better. Like don't worry about the wins and losses. You watch a game, it's always competitive. Um, at home, you're always a threat and I think the future is uh, very bright. It must, like I said, the, the, I still can't get over the North Melbourne throwing that, they winning that game and giving Harley Reid across. But uh, you boys, oh, that's, <laughs> it's, it's a blessing in disguise for you, uh, for West Coast. Um, it must be, yeah, it must be great to be back on track. What about Oscar, the great man, Skipper? It's good to see all you boys developing, but what kind of, was he always going to be the next Skipper? And uh, why is he such a strong leader? Um, yeah. I, I think so. I think he's, yeah, he's a born leader. Um, uh, pretty much since the first, first day he got in the club, uh, I'm a year older than him. So I've sort of seen him come through and he was just, he was never afraid to, never afraid to speak firstly, um, never afraid to, to pull, pull people up as well. And, um, he, in saying that, if you're going to pull someone up, you've also got to be able to receive it on the other side. And he's, he's welcoming of that. He wants to get better. Um, and I was, yeah, I think he had the year last year where he, he was amazing. The whole, he kicked over 50 goals, I think. And, um, I think that was a year that sort of showed everyone that, yep, he's like, he's, this is his team. He's commanding. He's the big, big forward, wants the responsibility of being a captain, which, you know, I, I don't think many people would because it'd be a tough job, I'd imagine. Um, Very tough. <laughs> I would yeah. imagine that as well. <laughs> yeah. well. I can't imagine actually. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, yeah, and you know he come in round one and did his knee, and um, he's pretty much been out the last ten weeks. And as he's one of my best mates, and you know you get picked to be a captain of the footy club, you want to be able to get out there straight away and and fly the flag for the boys. And he's not been able to do that, and um, he was struggling a little bit, um, sort of with that. Um, but now he's back, and um, yeah, he, he was straight amongst it yesterday. He probably could have kicked a bag, but um, yeah, it's. As a as a mate, it's been really good to see um, his development as a footballer and as a person. Um, we all walk a little bit taller when he's he's out there with us. That's for sure. It's a nice little forward line. You two sitting next to each other. There must be some great chemistry. Being you know best mates off the field as well. Is there any funny moments you have had on the field? Even like you know when you're on top of someone and you're calling their defenders a bunny. Like, is there any? What do you guys like on the field? Yeah, oh, he when he gets up and about, he's probably more the vocal one. Um, I'm just more like. Just having a yarn with the boat that's on me, like I'm pretty, low key. I'm pretty low key. In that re- oh, everyone gets a little bit caught up in footy sometimes, but traditionally that's probably more him than me. But um, yeah, I think the relationship between the two, even 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 JD is is great as well. It's just um, when you get stuff wrong or you get in each other's way or you, you fly for the same footy, it's never it's never you know f and get out of my way. That was mine. Blah blah. It's always like we talk about it now or we talk about it later and we just, we, we're always looking for ways to, to get better. And it sort of got to the point where, um, we, we all sort of know what each other's doing, um, and where we want the footy. So if someone's got the ball, like, I know he wants it there. I know he wants it there. Blah, blah, blah. Or I know Oscar's going to lead there. And, um, it's a, it's a, it's been years of sort of nutting it out and, um, it's only early days now for the three of us. Um, so, yeah, who knows? Um, ideally, each week we can all go out there and sort of kick a few each and um, all, all stay happy. But, um, you know, one week it might be JD kicking five, one, day, one week it might be me or Oscar. It's, you know, as long as we're helping each other out. Yeah, well said, mate. And it's funny, I can see you. And you. I reckon you'd rattle your opponents because you're such a good fella. And, you know, you've probably kicked three or four and you're still being real friendly. And they're probably like, I can try to get into you. It was, it, it's a good little tactic, I reckon. Just being able to chew, uh-huh. just chew the fat with your defender and not be aggressive. Because sometimes when you do get a bit lippy, the defender gets a bit aggro and they they tighten up. So it's actually a good tactic of yours just yeah, to be nice and friendly. It's, um, generally, it's not your, your direct opponent that's, 
you know, getting in the outs. It might be someone sort of sneaky half back coming down and having a, <laughs> having a word or two. But yeah, I, yeah, I haven't really come across too many blogs that just just it's getting not, into your. There's not flat. many, is there? It's anymore. like you know, we're just we're just like we're all blogs. We're like, all good, man. Yeah, Everyone's like funny. literally, like you hear, you hear stories about. There's what happens like in today's game. There's just so many mutual friends, so it's just like, all right, I know your mates with him, so yeah. you're my boy. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's a lot <laughs> of friends, I'm, isn't I'm there? Here, it's kind of like though. you forget when you're playing, and then after it, shake the hand, and it's a bit different to the old school days, don't you? They all kind of hated each other, yeah, and we yeah, build each other up. But um, nah, it's it's good, mate. I'm, I'd much rather um, have a bit have a bit of a chat than sort of a wrestle. Wrestling's too hard. Yeah, well then you as can't. A, as if, a forward, it's too hard anyway, mate. Yeah. If, you, <laughs> if you start wrestling each other, and, and you get fined as well. Yeah, exactly. You need to coin. Um, I want to talk about JK and also anyone else at the club. Like, who's been a big um, mentor for you, and what have they taught you? Um, probably yeah, JK and Lekka. Um, Lekka had a had a year with two years with him, and he's. He was he was different because he was more of a high half four, but he taught taught me um, a lot of little intricate things about playing high half forward. Um, and then moving to JK, who sort of become like one of my great mates. Just he was like a, a hero of mine, and then becoming one of your best mates is is a is a weird thing. But um, I, I spent years sort of watching him and, and listening to him and getting advice from him and. Um, Oh yeah, I'm starting to sort of reap the rewards of that now, really, and um, throwing Darling Hearn. I mean, I, I can't tell you how many baths Bunga gave me at, at training sessions. Like he always used to take the piss out of me. Like <laughs> I'd be walking out there, and he'd be like telling the trainer to bring me over a towel and stuff. He's like, <laughs> like, it was it was hilarious, but like I, that's why I've I've had all, I've always been playing with Kennedy, Lacroix, Cripps, Darling. And always been playing against Hearn, McGovern, Brass in training. So it's like, all right, well, I've got the best of the best I'm playing against every training session. So it makes me feel better about going out there on the weekend and playing against opposition. So, um, yeah, th- there's too many, too many guys. Um, you know, Cripper, um, one of my best mates now, has probably taught me what it takes um, work rate-wise to make it in the comp. And I remember being stuck with Cripps here and J.K., um, early days at the club in rehab and like, oh, oh yeah, oh, it was an eye opener. Like, I'd be, I'd, we'd have, a, we'd have like a session in the in the room, like the hurt locker or whatever, or whatever it gets called. But um, that would, yeah, we'd have a massive bike session, be smashing out these one k's. My legs are just like falling off, and I'm trying to keep up with these boys. Nowhere near it. Finish it. Start walking out and. Here, here, the room, the music's still going in the room. Pop my head back in there. They're on the rolls, like still going on the rolls. And I'm just like, these guys are animals. Like, no wonder they have the careers they've got. But, um, yeah, just the, the little things like that. It's just like, yeah, the eye openers that they've been able to sort of pass on to me. Oh, the, re- the, you, the rehab sessions, they give you nightmares, oh, don't they? Mate, uh, we, Simon Tunbridge, we used to have him on the list. He played for JRS. I don't know if you know Tunners, but <laughs> my first, um, Time was in rehab. Well, literally my first session, I was stuck with him, and he's a monster. I love it. And we were doing like, I can barely do ten push-ups. We're doing, <laughs> we're doing boxing, and then going down doing pushes, and I'll, and I, ca- I can't even get up. And he's like down to me, he's screaming at me, one more, two more, and I'm like crying, like trying to get up, like push up to that. And, oh mate, it's just like some of the scary is like welcome to the league sort of stuff, and it's just like. I, I was about to just drop it and like go up, see Voz, tear it up. Like, uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this isn't for me, lads. No, 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 no. <laughs> but it's every fun. time you get through like a session like that or a tough moment, it just sort of builds your, your character and to be able to deal with that stuff sort of as you go on. I reckon those rehab sessions are the some of the most taxing and toughest things you can do. And you, you're almost throwing up at the end of yeah. it every time. It, it, you literally, oh, I think I got to the point where I couldn't have brekkie because it was yeah. just, if I didn't have brekkie, I wouldn't throw up. Even yeah. coffees, I'd have, if I had a coffee, it had to be two hours before. Like if it was yeah. any closer than an hour, like I'm throwing it up. Yeah. It's just, um, and the thought of knowing you're going to be in that pain as well. Oh, yeah. you, know, like, like you don't sleep. It's like the night before like a 2K or something. It's just yeah. like, you just know it's coming and it's like, Oh, it's horrible, but <laughs> once you get it done, it's just like, yeah, yeah, One yeah. more. <laughs> mate. Oh, mate, I can't even explain it. Like, Who we, well, let's just go quick five. Who's the biggest animal at West Coast in the gym, in just gym, weights? Uh, well, it's it's 
it's always been JD because he's just like an all round freak. But Harry Edwards, one of our um, young key backs, um, he's, he's throwing around a fair bit of weight lately. Bailey Williams is going to be a, a hulk in there soon. Um, uh, Nick Nat wasn't even allowed to do upper body weights his last few years, I don't think. Um, oh, but Bunger was Bunger was insane, mate. Like, Bench press anything? I think I think he's got the record. His was like one sixty five Bunger. Wow. So nothing on. Paul Curtis here, he's throwing about 170 or something like that. Griff was telling me Paul Curtis is 160. That's ridiculous, mate. 160. That's Paul ridiculous. Curtis, everyone listen to that. Paul Curtis, he's 21, I think, isn't he? Yeah. 22 years that's old. A, that's respect. No wonder he's, he's a small forward. Palming off everyone left, right, He center. is powerful. Yeah. Yeah. I was saying yeah. I, I, I rate him highly. Yeah. And that's how the convo started. Griff went, yeah, he benches 160, man. Yeah. Once, yeah. What do you bench? Oh, like one, one twenty four. Hey, well, 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 I've done nothing. one rep, one hundred. Me best. No, mate, <laughs> oh, that's yeah. me best ever. I remember I had the whole. Cr- I had the crew around. Us. <laughs> I said, "Get around me, boys!" It was literally the bar didn't move for about thirty seconds, and when I got to the top, I was dancing. <laughs> nothing better though. When someone's like stuck there for like ten yeah. seconds, and then boys are going, it up. "Get it up!" Everyone goes crazy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I'm not too. Uh, I don't feature too heavily in the, the gym. It's testing, amazing mate. though, like watching you live. You think like you are. You're strong. It's amazing how it it, it does it does. Train Translate on the field, but I mean, you're saying Harley Reid's not throwing too much tin around yet. He can throw a grown man to the oh, ground. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. crazy. Yeah, it, it all changes. But for me, my like, to, so so revert back onto like how fit you are. I think being fitter allows you to sort of make a couple of hundred meter leads and then come back and then be able to have the strength and not be fatigued to sort of actually have a crack at someone. Makes sense because sometimes when you when you just when you're underdone or you you know, you, you're cooked, like you can barely stand up and like uh, it's hard to get a run and jump and fly because like your calves are about to go, like you got nothing left. But yeah, just being a little bit fitter sort of allows you to do what you want to do. Would you say you're the fittest you've ever been this year? Uh, I reckon I've been probably been a, like fitter when I was younger, like running like 2K wise and stuff. But I think um, holistically, um, yeah, I, I think uh, footy, footy fit, it's probably up there. Yeah, yeah nice. Um, welcome to the league moment before we talk about the Derby, just to give you a little, uh, idea of what we're talking about next, just the, the, you know, the relationship with Fremantle and West Coast, but the welcome to the league first, was there a moment where you, you know, you just remember your first game or your first year where you just had a moment with someone and you went, wow, this is AFL footy. Um, oh, I probably, probably a few, my first game was against Sydney and Buddy kicked eight. So like, I'm just down the other end, just like watching this guy, like <laughs> Borderline going ask for his autograph. Just like, <laughs> yeah. um, I was playing on uh, Big Reg Grundy that day, and he's huge. Like he's not tall. He's probably my height, maybe a little bit smaller. But like I just couldn't move him. And Sydney defenders just back shoulder relentlessly. Like you, you just can't get past him. And that was a good learning for me. Um, Michael Hurley gave me an absolute bath one day. Um, that was like a bit of a welcome to the league moment. I, I end up getting him back though. Um, in a final, which was nice. What did you kick on him? Oh, just a couple, but like I just felt like it was just like yeah, even yeah, yeah, like yeah. Um, no, mate, I haven't really had like a welcome to the league moment. It's it's more just been like little things, like in my third game, just like running past Gary Albert Junior, just like wow, like yeah, that's little just, things like that, mate. It's like as a fan of the game and a fan of these players and. Yeah, it's just sort of those it full, weird, full circle it? moments where yeah. I'm just like I'm running next to the little master and I'm just like. I know he's probably in the latter stage of his career, but for me that was it was it was funny at half time that game, i I was on the screen at like fourteen touches and he was at fourteen as well and I was just like <laughs> Screenshot that. Like, get the media person there, like, <laughs> yeah. Take your photo, photo the screen. Because that's just the, the youth coming out of you as well. Yeah, and yeah, because I'm only still like 18, 19. It's just Yeah, you you watch these legends for so long and then you're you're playing up against him and playing with him as well. So, um, yeah, I don't really have a welcome to league moment in terms of getting belted or, or whatever, yeah. but, um, yeah, a couple of demoralizing, um, losses and stuff like that, but no, all good. who, um, who's been the hardest opponent you've had so far? Um, oh, probably hurls, but I think, it, I think it changes because defend, like defenders can't like defend really good ball movement. And some days you, you might be playing on someone who's not as good as someone else, but like the ball move might be less and you just got no opportunities to sort of get to work as a forward. Um, but yeah, I played on uh, Rance. Rance was just like, he was another one just like 
turned around, he's standing behind me, just like, oh, yeah, I'm not getting one here. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's hard <laughs> to get past he's him. He's make me earn it. Um, who else? Oh, I spoke to you before. Like, um, I had a pretty good battle with Aiden Core the other week, and he he's really physical, so he's one of them. Um, who else? Were big Moose. Moose is pretty physical, and because he's so big, and um, he, he's got good closing speed. Um, who else is there? Jesus, just, just Lamb Jones, Weedering. There's Even, so many now, isn't oh, there? Oh, mate, it's just like it's probably yeah. good that Oscar's back. You'll get the second, you know, yeah, second oh, fiddle because oh, he's so just yeah. But taller. like every team's got like three gun key defenders yeah. or like hybrid defenders that just that can play tall, small, or, or whatever. You know, Mitch McGovern's a, probably a good example of that. He can play on bloody anyone, and he's he's a star as well. But like I said before, like mate, I play on her and McGovern and, and Barras and every training session, and that equips me to be able to go up against the best anywhere else so yeah um, it's good. yeah well said it is and, and you're right that ball movement piece is something that we do forget it's quick ball movement you can really slice up anyone really yeah. a couple yeah. of good little screens yeah. right let's talk about the derby uh the Fremantle v west coast i reckon in, in your time you'd be you'd be pumping us you'd be there's a lot of there's been a bit of a painful last six years for Freo. i'd imagine i mean we're starting to well you, actually you guys won this year so yeah you guys have probably won I think every game bar a few, um, couple. Yeah, yeah, I think there was a couple. You guys got there, sort of twenty one, twenty two, twenty three. But I, I don't think I played in all of those either. So I'm probably um, individually, um, yeah, probably more wins and losses. But yeah, derbies are so special. How would you explain it? So we're obviously we're recording this in Victoria, and everyone knows the Anzac Day clash and. The big rivalries, you know, Carlton, Collingwood, or Essendon and Richmond or whatever. There's there's a lot of rivalries, but the West Coast v Fremantle uh, Derby. How would you describe the town for those that don't understand that haven't yeah. been there? Yeah, it's it's hard to, but like because it's just the biggest state and there's two teams in there. It's it's similar to um, the showdown as well, um, but it's just it's two teams like states divided like and. The build up of these derbies, especially when there's like a lot on the line. When I think a few years ago, when both teams were doing really well, it's just like it was, everyone was so amped, ready to go. My, I remember my first derby was a was a free home game and running out like the boos were just like so loud. I just like started smiling. I was just <laughs> yeah. like, hey, "How good is this?" Like, can't even hear the theme song because like the boos are just like launching through the stadium. <laughs> but yeah, they they they're so special and. You know, we, we, yeah, we don't like each other and I think it, it gets pretty anti out there sometimes, but, um, I think over time, um, you know, Freo have become, you know, much more, there's probably a few stages there where West Coast will win and more of them and now Freo are absolutely flying and it's probably been switched over a little bit. So, um, the dynamics changed a little bit and, um, yeah, we we come out and won the last one, so pumped uh, us. Yeah, I don't think uh, many people would have predicted that one, no. but um, yeah, that's just that's the glory of it, I guess. And um, the team that rocks up and has a crack, usually the team that comes up. But um, yeah, it's going to be interesting later in the year. I think the the boys will be absolutely thrilled. I reckon the next one will be an absolute cracker. Yeah. Like, yeah, I don't worry about what the ladder's doing. Like I said, you guys are playing good footy. Yeah. Um, Freo's playing good footy and it's is it Freo's home game or yours? Yeah, Freo's. Yes, it's Freo's. So you're yeah. going to get that hostile the purple, environment. The, the purple <laughs> hazel, yeah. yeah. But, how, does it, do you know, how does the tickets work? I've never understood this. Is it is it just Freo fans and then West Coast get a small allocation? Like, yeah, oh, it would just be Freo members and then, um, yeah, sure, surely it's majority. So it's pretty much 90% yeah, Freo, I reckon, I reckon, would you say? I reckon, yeah, probably because probably, it's hometown, it's probably, probably even like 70, 30, but like it's just – but that 30 is pretty quiet because the crowd's... <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Well, hopefully we kick a few early ones in the boys. That's key, isn't it? A yeah, few early ones. Yeah, but re- regardless, like with home home or away, like you, you sort of get energy off the Freo fans as well because they hate you. You can hear them. Um, and we had that. We had a derby a few years ago where there was just a couple of melees going on. Like, yeah, that was just, yeah, the fans were getting involved. Like, felt like someone was going to jump over the bloody fence and... Come take me down, but no, nah, it's a it's a good um, it's good to be a part of. At the end of the day, it, it no, I've I've actually got some mates in the, in the Ferro team. It's just like you say good day and that, but like when you're out there, like like don't even want to look at you. Like yeah, it's just, it, you know how it is. It's just like yeah, stay away from me. Like if I'm gonna be throwing someone down, just don't let it be you, please. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, but no, nah, it's um, 
yeah, it's it's insane, mate. You played in a fair few. Yeah, played in a few, missed a few, but like I think we were in that stage where, yeah, we're both good and mm. you guys have always been probably a big brother. Like you've been around longer and you've yep. won flags. So um, we've probably come from the bottom. It's kind of that wolfy mentality. Yeah. And um, But the I guess being Victorian, I learned a lot about the culture and a lot yeah. about um, both teams, I guess, but mainly Fremantle and uh, and how hard it was early days and the yeah. rivalry. And, yeah. um, and, it, and, and I guess the fans, like, you know, obviously I only really know a lot of Frio fans, but you do meet a few West Coast fans, yeah. but the fans are – crazy passionate like they almost don't care about anything else yeah well they do they want to flag but they know that's so hard so it's like as long as we win the two two derbies yeah. during the year like, like and we play our best week. footy it sets yeah. up their yeah. well the next 10 weeks because yeah, they exactly, can it's bragging rights for yeah. the, and then if it's the i think the next one's big because it goes into the in, if, i mean if you guys win the next one like free yeah. fans are going to cop that for the whole year yeah, till exactly. next year so it's funny you because you're a victorian as well like just had you had seba on the the potty caleb strong yeah was, yeah and yeah. I, you know, I, he's a Victorian as well, and I remember listening to him on the radio after we'd done him, and honestly, he sounded filthy. Like, And it's as a Victorian coming in and sort of realising the significance of a derby, and he's obviously bought into it 100%. Um, you almost just, yeah, like the hate. You can you can mm. hear it in his voice. and So, yeah, yeah he's, he's one of those boys leading from the front for sure. And you're right about the anticipation. Like at the end of the day, we'll break it down. It's another game of footy. It's a bit more fire, but once the first quarter goes, the game opens up, right? It's a bit like a final. But the anticipation from as soon as the – like. I mean, the, you can't escape the papers, the streamers, people's car. Like, it's just everywhere. It's like Christmas, isn't it? Everyone's got the light. Like, just that week, and then it all dies down a little bit. But um, yeah, it's hard to explain, and it's it's great for footy. Yeah, no, it's it, it, they're great to be part of. And they're even like, is there a local cafe that you know a few free coffees that week? Have you had those experiences? Yeah, God, yeah, yeah, and it's all it's like I've got mates as well that are diehard West Coast and Freo supporters as well. So, um. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely send a few messages out after the last one. That's for sure. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> that's great. Yeah, no, nah, it's yeah, no, nah, they're they're a special victory to get. Well said, mate. And um, no, nah, we're looking forward to. It. I don't know what round it is. We'll have to have a look at what round the next it's one not is. Far away. I think it might be but, five five games away. Yeah, we'll have to um, we'll clip something up before it. Any predictions on what you think the result will oh, be? Man, I'm not talking. <laughs> Don't want to get him in trouble just in case in case for a roll ya. Jay will have it up in the team meeting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he would. I'm doing the dirty work for him now, <laughs> sussing it out. Um, all right, so we've got some um we've got to our questions here yep. and appreciate you sharing this on the gram. All Australian individual awards, do they cross your mind at the start of the year with goals? Nah, no. Nah, well, it definitely didn't, but um, obviously all the, all the stuff that comes out, all the talk, I, I don't really buy into it. Um, bit of recognition here and there, but, um, it's a long way, long way to go in the season. Yeah. And you sound like a, a great teammate and someone that yeah. all they care about is team success. Yeah. And I think that's something that a lot of people in the media, they do love the brown low, don't they? Like mm. I speak to a lot of my mates, they're always talking brown lows, rising stars, all Australian. Mm. It's not something that we ever really gave us stuff about. It's nah. all just flags mate, and that us, stuff kind of comes. Us role players, mate. We just got to. Well, what you're we not do. a role player now. Yeah, but I have, but I have been. Yeah, so I know. Just I know. Like, yeah, I relate to that. Yeah. Smitter Jr. 9 has written in. What's it like to be in the running for a Coleman? Considering you're, you're calling yourself a role player, but you are in the <laughs> running to be a Coleman medalist. Like you're up the top. What, what's it feel like when you do see yourself up there? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, mate. I, it, this is something that I'll when the season's done, I'll be able to sit back and reflect on. But I'm, I guess at the moment, I'm just sort of in a groove and just sort of going with the flow but um like you said just then it's it's not about me it's about we and like especially with Oscar coming back into the team I like I perfect well we all get a little bit what you know but um yeah the, if if you go chasing I feel like if you go chasing goals that's they get further away so yeah well um, said yeah what glue do you use on your hands? Oh, you, who said that? <laughs> Danny <laughs> Walker. No, Annie no, Walker, right, big right. fan of yours. What um, glue do you use on your hands since no, you always there, got the there's ball? There's all the little uh, grippo and stuff like that. you got to make <laughs> do sure. Do you apply there's... the grippo? Yeah, yeah, grippo. Grippo on, it's got to be. Do you but, put the grippo in the mud flap just so you got mate, extras? No, I don't, but I, it did get in there um, last a few weeks ago and it took me about a week to get out. But um, <laughs> no, I think uh, it's, a, it's a fine line with the grippo because if you put too much on, you do, you take a clunk and then 
you can't get rid of the ball off your hand. It's, yep. It gets that sticky. Matty Richardson some... reckons that's why he missed in the uh, the goal square once because the grip post stuck to the ball Mate, drop. You look at my uh, my second set shot um, last night. The ball bloody did a one eighty in my hand. It's just it's <laughs> ridiculous. It's a fine line, and yeah. it is big male on the mullet slash mud flap. Is it Joe Dirt inspired? Who's Joe Dirt? There you go. It's not Joe Dirt. I think it's from a movie. The, mu- <laughs> the, the mud flap. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. The great name, the mud flap. Yeah. Have you always called it that? No, nah, the um the uh the hundred K podcast boys started Oh my, yeah, the my, great man. Yeah, so my my older brother Alec um is a big follower of the hundred K podcast and he sent it to me one day and um yeah, piss funny. <laughs> the um, mud was a great call yeah, from those boys. All the boys have caught on to it, so um yeah, cop that a fair bit. I don't know, I've I've just had it for so long. It's sort of just be become become a bit of a thing, but everyone everyone has a laugh about it and you know, I'm one of those guys who's like take the piss out of me or, or whatever. I'm happy to be the brunt of it, blah, blah, blah. But, um, yeah, it provides a bit of a laugh. So it's, yeah. but it's your, it's you, like you can't get yeah. rid of it. I've got a mate, we'll shout him out, Zach Tracy. He hopefully he's listening, but he's always had a mullet and it's mm. been that nice and blonde. He put a little bit of blonde. But anyway, he's, he's, he's had a haircut and spare at the moment. He's just gone short he's back just, and sides. Just and lost it? we were calling him the, you know, the pirate of dodgeball, you know, the, like, yeah, that's yeah, a, you Pete. Know, yeah. Yeah. Is it Pete or Steve <laughs> yeah. or something? Or Steve or whatever, Steve anyway, whatever his name was. They're like, mate, you look like that bloke when he just <laughs> completely just changed his identity at the end and had a full <laughs> meltdown and he shaved it. So like he's gone back to the, and we're kind of, dis- we're going, oh mate, we're all a bit flat. We, yeah. we missed the mullet. So I think for you with the mud flap, you've got to keep it forever. Yeah, I, I did get rid of it a little bit and you, you just you just feel a bit lost, don't you? Yeah. But especially when you're kicking snags every week. Yeah, yeah. Um some is any well, before I uh, Lukey Live O one's written in, would you change your number to seventeen? Uh is seventeen available? Mm, yeah it is, but nah, nah. Is that retired? <laughs> nah, that'll that'll get filled by someone, I'm sure. But you wouldn't change to the great man? Nah, no, nah, I've already changed to the great man. Lecker, lecker yeah, you're right. Yeah, great call actually. Yeah. You can't change three times. It'd be nah, disrespectful. That's um is Fraser Garrick your idol or your dad? <laughs> <laughs> From Sean Simons. Um, <laughs> Hair, yeah. build, and attack on the pill. Very similar. <laughs> very good there from Simons. It's, um, it's actually funny because obviously the G train played for West Coast first half and played, played with me old man. And there's the team photos up there and the boys are like, which one? Which one's the old man? No. <laughs> but no, nah, um, obviously G train's a legend of the game and yeah. some, of his, some of his old highlights were just Ridiculously good, but nah, not wouldn't say inspired by. Um, this one's from Brody Goldwyn. What was your, who was your favourite player growing up? Um, I had uh, I was a diehard Port supporter growing really? up. Yeah, yeah, because dad coaching Peel Thunder in the Waffle, just the same sort of colours. I was um, I just picked Port. Um, I'd say Warren Treadray, uh, Jonathan Brown was up there, and, and Lloydie as well. Probably the three. Just all the Fords. Yeah, just as, as a young fellow, you just see goals and you just. Do you just, just love footy? You'd, were you passionate, Port? Oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah. you've got all the, the, the retro jerseys they were on the weekend. You'd I have that. It. I reckon they're, they're wicked. Yeah, but I, I probably sort of stopped. Probably when I turned like 15, I reckon that's probably when I stopped supporting Port because then you're sort of like, you're, you're, coming, into, yeah, you're coming into sort of. You can't be rolling in with your port hat at the West Coast. <laughs> nah, and then I sort of started. I, that's when I started sort of going to more West Coast games, and you know, the old man would send me there and go, yeah, "Take me life membership tickets and go, go watch Kennedy and Lacroix. Like, don't don't watch the footy, just go watch them too and see what they do when the ball's at the other end of the ground." And that was sort of when I started watching footy a little bit differently and less as a supporter and more as someone who wanted to actually learn stuff about the game because yeah. so many people just go to the game, and watch the ball, and you. Like you, yeah, you, you just don't, you, you know, if you got, if you glued to the ball, you sort of, you don't see what's fully happening. Yeah, you're right. It's hard to watch for, like I'd, I'd imagine being a young player trying to not watch the ball, but then watch the leading patterns and all that. It, yeah. you'd, you'd be zoning in and out, wouldn't you? Yeah. I, I, I just found it like, I was just so intrigued by it. Like just seeing guys just put on like eight leads or whatever, or, you know, Kennedy is at half back flank and all of a sudden he's getting the ball in the goal square, kicking the snag. It's just like, how did he get there? And then you... You go back and have a look on a replay and it's like, wow, he just dropped the hammer and ran 150 metres as fast as he could and mm. absolutely burned his opponent off his legs. But, um, yeah, probably because dad, dad was a coach and I've sort of grown up around whiteboards and, and whatnot. I started probably watching footy a little bit differently to probably my mates did when I was more younger. So, um, yeah, I've sort of just been sort of, 
a student in the game since I was real young, I guess. Let's talk about your old man. What we, we can see the impact that he's had on you and your career. Like, what other things do you reckon your old man's given you a bit of more of a leg up early days? Um, any things that you can kind of share for young players coming through? Um, well, firstly, he never like pushed me to do anything. So he never pushed me to play footy or, or whatever, which I, th- I thought was great. And he was never he was never vocal like at all during junior footy. He 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 knew that I had junior coaches doing all that stuff and. He, he'd give me advice, but he'd never, he'd never be the old man that you know when I got in the car after the game, yeah. he'd berate me about. You don't what, want it. You don't want the one. Like we've all seen him. Yeah, you see him, and you're just like, oh wow, I'm lucky. Um, but yeah, he always sort of, I, I would have to go and um, seek advice from him or ask him opinions, and yeah, he'd he'd give me his opinions. And you know, when you when you're a young fella, and you know, I just took my dad's word as gospel, and more often than not, it, you know, helped me out so much and. Um, yeah, I, I was very lucky to, to have someone with his experience sort of, um, as my old man and, and grow up beside. And, um, even, even these days it's, it's similar to what it was back in the day. Like I'll give him a call and say, what do you reckon? And you know, he'll tell me. And then if I don't agree with it, I'll tell him back. And then he, he will go, yep, fair enough. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> don't call me then. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he, 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 he's, been, he's been, he's been great. He's, um, yeah, one of my, my big inspirations and yeah, I don't know where I'd be without sort of his guidance. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I was just visualising like, I remember driving around with the old man as a kid and you know when you've just had a stinker, yeah. <laughs> like you're sometimes looking for a bit of a pat in the back and yeah. they just go, well, geez, you had a stinker today, yeah, didn't you? Yeah. And you're kind of just, you're just yeah. good. You, you get that raw honesty, which is what you need. Yeah. It's, <laughs> I think that's the best. Don't call that, me then. After, after, a, after a sh- like a shocking performance, like yeah. he, he's always, he'll always find a way to, to pick me up when I'm down, he'd be like, geez, you got, you got missed a couple of times or the work rate was good, blah, blah, which is always great. And, but like you said, like the, the funny, the funny times you get on the call and you just sort of ring him up and you're there and you're like, yep, it wasn't your day, wasn't it, young fella? It's <laughs> <laughs> just like, it's just like, and, you know, a bit of humour, like a laugh, just it yeah. heals everything. But mm. yeah, I, I, yeah, I never really, had, oh, I reckon I had one day when I was young when he, he probably, he yelled out something. And I, I sort of gave him the finger from the ground, and yeah, <laughs> the I was, bird, I was gave him the bird, and that's just like scared, my scared I've ever been my whole life. Just like <laughs> got a lift home from someone else, like <laughs> <laughs> some of the funniest stuff ever. But oh, mate. what was he telling you? Not working hard enough? Oh, I think he said something like, "Oh, if you're gonna run, run to the bench or something like that." <laughs> 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 and I was like. Oh, mate, it's it's so it's, it's so stuff. funny looking it's back on it, eh? But in the moment, you're just shitting it because you've just made a mess. Yeah. <laughs> Not worried about the ball, just worried about getting off the ground alive. <laughs> 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 oh, that's great. That is awesome. Uh, back to the questions. There's <laughs> some good questions here. Um, oh, your post game meal from Leo King. What's your um? Yeah, what do you eat? Maybe pre game as well. Um, I usually pre game. I usually order in. Um, probably like a couple servings of pasta and then I'll just have a little bit before the game just so I've got something there to eat. Um, try not to overdo it before a game. Don't like feeling too heavy. Um, after a game, I'm not a big eater after a game, eh? Like especially if you play a stinker, you lose your appetite, eh? <laughs> yeah, like, you're you, not, you, you just sit there and you, you just, just stare at the floor. Mate, it's the worst. <laughs> um, but but when, you, when you kick a few goals and you yeah, win. You, you even can... then, I'm, I'm not a massive eater after a game, eh? It's just like just sort of wait. Do you have beers in the rooms? Uh, on occasions, when when we have like an eight or a seven day break, they usually roll in the esky um, after a win or after like a milestone game. Um, but that like after a good win or a milestone or something like that, when they roll the esky and just have a couple with the boys, nothing silly. But it's just that that sort of twenty thirty after a win, sitting around with the lads, knowing what you've just done is like the best part of footy. Yeah. Um, because after that 30, 30, 40 minutes, like. You're you're already thinking about the next game, like mm. it's just on to the next one, sort of. So. And all the staff chill out, like you know how yeah. you've got like your property stewards and your assistant yeah. coaches. They're all running around. Yeah. It's just like chill out. We can yeah. do that in thirty minutes, and everyone has a beer and a bit yeah. of a laugh. Yeah, the, the assistant coach come out, Simo comes out, and we just have a bit of a laugh and you know, talk about funny stuff that happened in the game and and what was good, and then it's more local vibes as well. Yeah, it is, and that's what that's what we all come from. That's why we all started playing footy anyway. And there's usually uh, family in the rooms as well, so you just walk around. You know, see the lads, see family, 
yeah, it's a, it's a good feeling. But like, like I said, once you leave and drive home, it's like, yeah, all right, we'll go back into the club tomorrow, do a review, and then we're on to on yeah, the recovery next. review and do it all again. Um, who's the funniest bastard in the uh, in the locker room? Like, who, who am I visualizing shuffling with a with the speaker on their <laughs> shoulder? Like, who's bringing their group up and about, especially uh, after a win, having a couple of beers? Like, who are we? What are we looking at here? Um, we've, we've, we've got so many. We got like, Tommy Cole's. Probably that yeah, one. yeah. Tommy Cole's funny. Uh, with those funny, uh, Rossi, yeah, they're like all three of my best mates as well. But G- Gav's hilarious. Yeah, big, yeah. big Javni went like the best storyteller I've like ever heard in my life. Really, like, we we do on away trips. We do so we have dinner at like six, and then we have like this supper option at like nine or nine thirty, where like you come down and sort of top up if you if you're a little bit hungry. And usually we got this like supper crew, and we've lost a few over time. Kenners was a big one, but. He's obviously retired, but he like he just some of the suppers <laughs> I had, man. We just sit there till like nearly even midnight, and just like everyone's just fixated on Gav telling the story, and he's up like <laughs> signaling and stuff, just like got yes. the boy, the other boys in like the palm of his hand, just going absolutely That's skits. Brilliant. Oh, it's just yeah, he, he he's one of the funniest ones. Oh. There's too many. Liam Ryan's funny just because he's oh, so man. like well, he's so of Liam, he's like, what, Do you guys talk about Liam Ryan and the rugs that he's promoting? Have you seen this? Yeah, oh, yeah. Does he talk? Good, like, yeah. the, what is what's is it? Depot rugs. I, well, oh. I can't remember the name, so forgive me. But like these videos who are going around, does he does he come in the club and talk about it? Oh, initially, like <laughs> oh, I like. <laughs> Like I've seen him, like he, I can see what's going on. They're going, "Hey, mate, can you stand there and say this?" And he's literally oh, going, "Yeah, no like, worries." Yeah, and he says it, and then he goes, "Is that all good?" And so walks flat, out, like, so flat. Um, <laughs> I was just because I sit next to him. I'm just like, I've oh, forgotten stars. Chuck it up, and I'm just like, oh, hey, like what's this? And he like looks down, like, like angry, <laughs> angry as anything. And then, and then like a few of the boys start like taking the piss out of him. And it's like, you see, you get on his bad side. So like yeah. I was just like. Stay outside arm jury, sort of. <laughs> and it's just like, I think it took me a while to sort of realise it. It was just a bit of a running gag. And then he started doing, I think he did the sort of same sort of thing with Street X, Dan Bradshaw's yeah. um, brand there. And they sort of made a bit of a funny thing about it. But yeah, Liam's hilarious because he just like, yeah. He I've just, heard the boys have said, he says some, like, even in, on the field, he'd be like, then stand there, I'm going to jump on you. Like, he literally yeah, oh, yeah. real lippy and funny, but funny. The boys reckon they start laughing when he when he starts chirping. Yeah, yeah 100%. He's, he, he'll tell blokes he's going to put them on a footy card. Just yeah. like, and it's just like, okay. That's, that's All the time, they reckon. No, nah, he's, from when he got to the club to now, he's just like, like, changed so much. He's gone, like, he just gets it now. And, mm. Um. Yeah, he's one of he's one of my good mates. He's yeah, he's it's good to see him back oh, up he's and going. Mm. Absolute star. Yeah, gun, gun. I remember. Um, crazy yeah, things. he is a freak. Yeah, and even playing more midfield at the moment. I'm recording this off the Essendon game, but he was he's dominating some of those centre square um, bounces and yeah, getting the clearances. Absolutely. All right, let's get back to some questions. Um, a lot of dating questions here, Snake. We'll move on from them. A lot of girls. So there's clearly the the the, uh, the mud flap is single. Um, <laughs> Jakey, what's your most commonly used emoji? The handshake one, I usually just like, oh, yeah. just fling that on the end of like when I'm talking to someone, just like. That's like a cheers. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because I don't like, like thumbs up, just like. Yeah. More of a dad. You gave me a thumbs up this yeah. morning. Oh, I so picked you on the phone and gave me the thumbs up. I said, come on, man. Fuck. <laughs> I think people I would give me the thumbs up, I reckon, if people are like 55 plus. Yeah. Dad. You, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? You're like, oh, it hurts, but I'll let it go. Sorry, mate. Sorry. I'll, just, <laughs> I'll be better. You did love heart. I mean, you did um thumbs up the comment. So yeah, it's, okay. I'll let you slide. Oh, let me, let, that's all right. Um, oh, a couple more here questions. The loosh. What's the loosh? Oh, the loosh. There's a lot of, there's, there's three in a row. Who's going to play on the loosh? Who's going to stop the loosh and the loosh? Explain it, please. Um, oh, you know, like, yeah, Fev Illusion, Fev, the loosh. You know, he goes, who's going to play on the loosh? <laughs> yeah. like, like, Fev's like an absolute idol of mine. And I think it was one one game in the waffle in 18, I reckon late in the year, I kicked like eight or something. And Fraser McInnes, who used to play with us on the list, just sort of yelled out like, who's going to play on the loosh? <laughs> <laughs> And you know, like when you when you're sort of new to a footy club, um, and you don't really like have a have a nickname as such. Like there's a few nicknames going around, and then like someone hears something, it just sticks like that. Yeah. So yeah, I just I cop the illusion. I, I I don't like it because it's obviously in <laughs> comparison to one of the greatest forwards of all time, yeah. who's kicked goals like no other. <laughs> but it, it's just it's just funny. Like, so your nickname is the Loosh. Oh, you know, like between a few of us, it's yeah. just like. Uh, 
Well, that's how we gave Matt Tabernard the duck. Yeah, it, yeah. And, and he, like, he hated it. Yeah. Obviously, Wayne Carey, yeah, I Matt Tabernard. Like, you can never... You can never, there's never going to be another duck, but he hated it. And the fact that he hated it, like it Just stuck. It. Well, it stuck. So yeah. you can't hate the nickname. You got to almost, if you embrace it, they'll go, don't call him that. Yeah. It was a bit like me at the start. I was just like, nah, don't, <laughs> don't do it. Like I'm literally playing waffle with <laughs> that. <laughs> yeah, you're in the waffle yeah, game called like, the loose. Don't call me the loose, but. It's a nah, great it's nickname. Funny, Who's going to play on the loose? <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never heard of that. I didn't know that. That's no. good. Oh, you love your WWE, don't you? There's a question yeah, here from Brandon Rom underscore. Snakes yeah. top three WWE superstars. I know he's a crazy fan. Yeah, that's one of my mates. Um, yeah, we've got a little WWE following um, at West Coast. It's picked uh, up. The last yeah. year it's been unreal. Well, they come to Perth and I think that sort of reset everyone a little bit, but I was I was mad into it back in the day. Like that was my thing. Um, oh, top three, Jesus. Uh, go Eddie Guerrero, rest in peace. Yep. Uh, Five-star frog splash. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's a bit, mine's probably a little bit different. Love Jeff Hardy just because he used to like just do some crazy stuff. And last one, number three. Wow, come on. Um, probably uh, Shawn Michaels. It's oh, too, yeah. You can't narrow it down to three, but heartbreak uh, kid. Wasn't heartbreak it? Yeah. kid. Yeah, trying to think of my. Uh, yeah, that's uh, good. Yeah, Ro uh, Joshy Rotham's keen. Jack Petrocelli is like, like, just loves it. Even Gov, Gov gets around it as well. He's well, it's a, good if you know their celebration. Like you've got yeah, a few yeah, blokes like, that can do Ric Flair and anyone yeah. that can like quote what these blokes say is very funny. Yeah, me and Rothy do the um the, the DX celebration in games, like the crossover high <laughs> five. Oh, do you? Yeah, because there's a sick photo of one early in the year against Melbourne. I'd turn <laughs> around, he's right there. And he's <laughs> 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 it's good when you know, like now that you're explaining it, like yeah. people are probably going, what are these blokes doing? Oh, mate, yeah, absolutely. But no, nah, it's just little things like that, like around a locker room, just like, I'd love just you to do the so uh, Shawn Michaels value. kick to his chest and oh, see if you can act that sweet way. Sweet chin out. music. But it's sweet chin music uh, after weeks. kicking a couple of goals. <laughs> just a little bit. you got to time it. Don't kick him in the chin. But yeah. that'd be uh, that'd be unbelievable. unbelievable. That's good. I was a big um, I was a big Rey Mysterio man yeah, right. and uh, and the Batista. But I used to love Batista. Batista. I think he was in his prime when I was obsessed. Yeah, when I was a was, young kid. He's he's one of he's probably just just outside of the top threes. Yeah, me and my mates send. I know we we probably shouldn't talk about him because he's been done. But Vince McMahon. Yeah, we we get we see some of the stuff he used to do, and we go, how did this bloke get away with this Mate, stuff? Some of the stuff. How he's, he's a crook unit. To people, eh? <laughs> oh, he's a crook. He's, he's, he's a, seen yeah, but he looks like a crook unit Mate, as well. Yeah, he's um he's getting. Fat. Found air on ours. Yeah. For sure. Favorite memory in the in the meeting room? Like, has there been any like real funny, even like awkward encounters? Or I know like when we used to, you know, when we used to get in there, there's all like you had your seating arrangement. Do you have that? Um, did, is there been a time where you've had a real awkward meeting and someone's fucked up, someone being late? Any moments like that? Oh, mate, your story. It's <laughs> like me and my mate think that's a, think that's the funniest thing ever. Um, uh, no, nah, I don't think so, mate. I reckon. Like there's always there's a few guys here and there that um, love to talk up in the in the meetings and probably at the wrong time. Yeah, and I've that I had some someone sit behind me and he's not at the footy club anymore. But I won't say his name, but we we'd just like probably come off a loss and you know Simo would be talking and he sort of he sort of asked what what do we think? But he's not really asking what we think. He's just more saying it. And then someone will pipe up and I'm like sitting there like I'm on the end and I'm like. Sitting there, the bloke behind me's piped up, and I'm just like grabbing his leg, like just like, <laughs> shut up, like <laughs> what happened? And I'm just like squeezing his ankle, just like telling him to be quiet. But nah, we've there's uh, Simo's really good in his his reviews. He doesn't really leave any room for you know anyone to sort of cop a bad. He cop cop spray here and there, but that's footy. But yeah, nothing like a. Uh, yeah, losing your seat on the bus, mate. That'd be, oh, oh, yeah. Mate, I've lost my seat on the bus. Yeah, I've, you lost your seat on the I've bus. I've had the um, – I've had more than that, mate. I've had yeah. – I've had. I could get into it another time. We've had coffees in there and and been absolute – like, here's one. So one day we rolled in. So we got in the uh, meeting room and Tabsy has got the takeaway coffees for me and another bloke called Tom. Yeah. Um, and so we got three coffees, right? And we might have been coming – I think we might, weren't even coming off a loss. I think it's midweek. We must have a tough opponent coming yeah. up. Sit down and I'm in the front and I think I've already been told to sit at the front because we're, we're taking our notepads out and I'm sitting there anyway and I'll get the coffee like you do. You grab it and I'll oh, like, no. put it put it down next to me legs. And he, the, the coach hasn't even the coach hasn't even seen me yet anyway. And um he's just he's already he's in a terrible mood and he's like, Righto boys, 
actually stop. Tommy, why have you got a coffee? Like, he's not even looking at me. And I'm like, in my head, I'm going, how hey, the fuck has he spotted me coffee? He goes, you know what? Who's a, who else has a coffee? And <laughs> Tabs has gone off. Oh, fuck, like, yeah, I do as well. And then um, he goes, you know what? If you've got a coffee, fucking get at them. Is it a coffee club or meeting? Fucking get out. And, like, all of a sudden, this other bloke, Tommy, I didn't realise because I didn't know Tabsy bought him a coffee. I thought yeah. he just got me one. Yeah. I've grabbed me a coffee and – I've stood up and I'm. And he goes, "What the fuck?" He goes, "What are you doing?" And I go, "Oh, I've got it." He says, "You've got a coffee as well." And he's, "I'm like, oh no, I've lagged myself in." He goes, "Why is it no fucking surprise? You've got one as well. Get out!" <laughs> and I like, get out, right? And I'm out there. I'll never forget. Like, you got your fucking coffee. You're sitting there, and I'm looking at. I think actually, I think we're all sitting in the in the corridor. I'm going, "What do we? What do we do here?" Like the meeting's just started, and I remember like Sperry going, "Hey boys." Uh, because he literally said, go down the cafe strip in Fremantle and go get another one. Like, he was being a real smart. Yeah. It was pretty funny, but I'm like, this is fucking bizarre. Yeah. Anyway, and then, um, and by the way, the reason I had a coffee was because we've been doing it all year. Like, there's no one. Anyway, so we're sitting there and then <laughs> we, <laughs> Spurry goes, come back in and we come back in and, you know, the awkwardness of walking yeah, into oh. a meeting, mate. So we sit down and the, no coffees, get a couple little spray, off we go. Mate, two weeks later, who comes in with a coffee? No, big fella. The big fella walks in. He goes, how are we feeling today? He's got a mug of coffee in his hand and I'm sitting there going, I can't win. Oh, I was like, you've got to be joking me. And they're the moments where I go, wow, we like, I can't, I can't win. And I remember someone even saying like, yeah, we don't like, you know, how, like people stand up in the man. They go, yeah, no, nah, we've, I think he dread. Like, do we normally have coffees? And well, someone's like, I reckon it might've even been Spanky Johnson. He goes, no, 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 we never do. I'm thinking you fucking got one between your legs as you're talking. I reckon it was that yeah. funny, man. Like looking Mate. back, just weird shit like that in the meeting room where, you know what, it's kind of funny now because it won't happen again. Yeah. But, oh, um, yeah. You know, you, going through those experiences just like shapes you, I reckon. Like, oh, yeah. I remember I came walking into a, a, one of Simo's meetings late in my first year and um, sort of had to like open the door and walk across the front of everyone. And there was about five of us. We just like stuffed up the itinerary and walk in and he's like, where, like, where are you bikes back? <laughs> and I'm like, and I've set, I've, it's like a question you just don't answer. And I've like just tried to answer it and just couldn't get the words out of my mouth. So I'm just like, oh, it, <laughs> and just, didn't even speak English, just walking across the front of the lectures theatre with like everyone looking at me. It's just like, the, no, they're, no. They're the moments that I would be sitting because I ended up moving to the back and I'd just sit there and you'd squeeze the guy next to his leg because oh, you'd try not to laugh. You'd be sitting there like, oh, these boys are fucked. Oh, mate. It's hard, <laughs> mate, nothing funnier than blokes walking in late to like a meeting with like a takeaway coffee in there. It's oh. just like, oh, Jesus. It's like, come yeah. on. We were just, getting to the point where we were like 10 minutes early. So they were starting five early because everyone was in the room. So yeah. it's almost like anxiety yeah. attack yeah. if you you know how tight the schedule is. Sometimes yeah. you've got ice baths and you're straight into a meeting. So yeah. you're sprinting in the showers. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's very good, mate. Very oh, some good times. Well, mate, thanks so yeah. much for coming on. It's great to um see you again. And obviously weird. I've been following you, you know, on, you watch every game and have a laugh. But um, yeah, yeah, it's good to get you in the studio and we'll get you back in here. We'll get you amongst it. Um, but, yeah, from Rick's Eyewear, mate, we got you a uh, little yeah. present for jumping go. on. Uh, we got it's got you a Boston Black. Boston. So that's uh, that's, me, that's that's you, mate. That'll suit the mud flap and the, yeah, uh, the elite Adidas top you got on there. It's around the bonds. <laughs> around the bonds. Oh, yeah, that's you. Where would you take them? Where, where's the uh, local uh, bar? That's, uh, where am I going these days? Yeah. Um, Say you got to buy. Where do you just perch up? Um, there's a couple on Scar Beach Road now. A couple of like wine bars. It's the St. Bridges and um, Corner Dairy, which is sort of the local. But I'm trying, uh, yeah, try and stay. You know, that you know what these days. Yeah, you got to just get. Yeah, the old Perth circuit just chews you up and spits you out these days. Yeah. Can't but hack it. Can't the boring it. circuit midweek, uh, mid, uh, like in the winter, I reckon. Yeah. It doesn't come alive till the end of the year. Yeah, you don't get many cracks at it though, especially when we're playing on nah. Sunday. But. Nah, it's With all the travel as well. Yeah. Mate, Cheers, put them mate. on for me, and I'm going to ask you a question. Rick's on tour. Anyone else wants a pair of sunnies, we have the discount code ACES for 20% off and free express shipping. So head online to rickshighway.com and check them out. Um, the Snake has the black Bostons on if you want the exact pair. I've got your hat as well, mate. But um, all right, Rick's on tour. So you're uh, you're single lad as we're talking. So <laughs> you've got the, the world uh, at your feet. Where would you like to go in the world for a week? You have to pick two teammates, and yep. uh, you need to tell me why you're taking those two. 
Oh, wow. Um, a couple of years ago, I went to Europe with, I think it was six of us, six or seven of us, and that was like the best sort of two and a half weeks of my life. That was just great fun. Um, I'd probably take, I'm going to take your boy, Joshy Rotham, um, and I'll try to go a bit different here. I'll try to change something up. I'll take an old boy with me. I'll take Gov. So I'll take Rothy and yeah. Gov. So the I storyteller. Yeah, I won't have to. I won't have to speak too much on the tour, which is good. I'll just sit back and enjoy the show. But um, if I could go, if I could spend a week at Oktoberfest right in the guts oh. of it, oh mate, it's just there's nothing better. Did you do that last year? Yeah, oh the year before. I went last year as well, and the year before. I think it's just great. Like the happiest place ever. Like yeah, well said. Yeah, it's like you get there in the morning and have. Have a stein and then everyone's up on the table. You dancing. have it after two steins. Mate, it's it's <laughs> unbelievable. It's yeah. How many did you get through? Because all the big boys, oh. I think Tabs and Moose got five to six. Oh man, once I got to just before the fifth, I was blind. Yeah, I reckon, yeah, you are blind after like two or three. It's just like uh, it was funny. I uh, went with uh, Alex Withered and and in our um what's it called? We were doing one of those tours. Uh what are they called? I forgot what they're called, but um the the chick that was running our, our tour would have the black pen and they like write them every stein you get. She was like writing oh, it yeah. and he's, he took the pen off her and just put like eight on there and we'd only been there for about three hours. He's like, <laughs> well, you boys out? Like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't, I don't know how many they got through, but it's, you put on a bit of weight at those things. Oh, like yeah. Just eating the, eating the full chickens Pork and the knuckles. macaroni cheese. Oh, yeah. It's beautiful, Did mate. you have any food fights? Nah. Did you see the food flying around though? Nah. Oh, what? See, a lot of people didn't. My experience must have been different. We're at, what tent were you in? Were you in that Aussie uh, New Zealand tent, yeah, the main was, one? Uh, oh, mate, you hear so many things about different tents. The, what was it? Hoffenbrow Ho- or yeah, the big, the, big uh, line or something? I uh, think the Hoffenbrow is yeah, the one I'm talking about. Yeah, maybe. Spent a couple of days there. Yeah, you bump into so many Aussies and that. When, so maybe when was, I was there, we had everyone was sculling. St- like, so they'd get up, and when they got up and stood on the table, yeah, the whole sculling. tent would start cheering. Yeah. And if they hadn't sculled it quick enough, they'd start booing oh, really? and then they would start throwing food at them like yeah. the breadsticks and the pork knuckles oh, and right, mate go. it was it was crazy I'd never seen anything like it mate it'd, it'd be tough to get one of those steins down oh, there was, I reckon a chick was the only one that like got up and yeah and moved because it's a liter of piss yeah and moved it at a rate where everyone was happy with it but everyone else is getting booed yeah I've, I think it's so impressive like yeah I've, I'd I did not even try. I would have nah. embarrassed myself. But nah, yeah, you could, you, it's a massive effort. Yeah, but yeah, Oktoberfest was. Uh, I highly recommend to anyone uh, wanting to head over Europe and have a few beers with their. So with those their two crew. boys you're going with, what do they bring into the table? Gov, is he the storyteller? Is he the leader? Yeah, raw, uh, yeah, yeah. No, Rothy will be the leader because he, he could he could talk to a tree. Like he would just find <laughs> someone to talk to. <laughs> talk like to a tree. like he could. Yeah, he he will make sure the the group is. Um, is larger as we go because he would just bring people in. So it won't just be the three of us. It'll be more, more, uh, we'll meet people along the way. Um, Gav just there for a, like a bit of experience, just like, just make sure we're on the right path. And, um, they're, yeah, they're both good fun. That's as well, great. Obviously. I can imagine Gov recapping the trip beautifully to the boys at Suffer Club as well. Oh, mate. He'd, <laughs> he'd be yeah. able to remember every detail. Yeah, absolutely. I'll have but, to get him on the pod then. Sounds like the man. Hey, he's a good fella. He's, I, don't, I don't know how accessible he'd be to come on a pod, but I'll uh, put in a good we'll have word to, yeah, for you. We'll have to push through. Yeah. We'll see how we go when he's down in town. But, um, oh, that's great, mate. So, yeah, back to back to uh, Oktoberfest with those two boys and the Rixies is, is where you're taking yeah, them. We'll be, we'll be there. I love it, mate. We'll uh, appreciate you uh, sharing and uh, you can take them off, mate. I appreciate everything, you jumping on. Um, where to now, mate? For the What's the what's the plan for you and the and the footy club this year? Clearly just, just down the bottom a little bit, but playing great footy, is it – have you guys – had a meeting, you know, at the halfway point. Like, what is your plan? Yeah, we did. We had a probably mid year review, as I'm sure most clubs do um, during the bye week, where you just sort of um, have a meeting and have a look at your uh, your KPIs. And I'm sure every team's KPIs would be pretty similar, but teams might be different here and there. But ours is, you know, m- mostly focused on like contest and pressure. So um, you should be able to get those two things right against any team. And um, if you do, you're in with a sniff. So. Um, we're trying to build an, an identity as a as a team that every week we can go out and it's achievable and, you know, that our fans can be proud of. So um, win, lose or draw, uh, we want to be able to hold our heads high walking off and I'm sure if we um, endeavour to do the right things uh, more often than not, I think there's going to be um, some wins down the track and hopefully – some before the end of the season. Yeah, well said, mate. No, really well said. The list is shaping up beautifully and 
I'm excited about this next derby because it'll be close and there's a lot on the line because Freo don't want to lose two in a row. But, mate, great to see you flying as well. Great to see your face again. And, um, yeah, we'll catch up soon, in the uh, especially the off-season, and have a couple of quiet ones. But, yeah, thanks so much for jumping on the potty. And, and to uh, everyone out there that's uh, written in a cracker question and uh, shown some support, uh, we appreciate you. We hope you enjoyed this one. Um, give it a like, share it with your mates. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you next week on another episode of Tommy Talks. Cheers. This episode is proudly sponsored by KPI Construction Services. When it comes to construction sites, reliability and efficiency are key. That's where KPI Construction Services shines. With a single call, KPI provides a range of essential services, which includes labour hire, crane hire and traffic control. KPI is a progressive business with modern plan and equipment across all of their operating states. Focusing on innovation and to avoid the business drifting is always front of mind. We are proud to be aligned with and have such a reputable company partnering with the show. Aces, I know I always go on about the Rixies, but I got huge news. We have all our styles and colors restocked on the website right now. Get online. Grab some sunglasses at rickseyewear.com.au right now and use our little discount code ACES if you want a 20% discount code on the house.